All right, I'm going to do another quick study here and show you something else that the NIV uh, does, which is very, very strange why they would do this. And you're going to see what I mean by that as we get into this study. So I'm going to read a couple verses from the King James Bible for you, and we'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, here we have Matthew chapter 17. We're going to go over here to verse 14. Let me zoom in a little bit here so it's really easy to read. It says here, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now look at verse 21. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. This kind of devil cannot be cast out, but by prayer and fasting. Okay, now over in Mark, Mar excuse me, Mark chapter 9, we're not going to read the whole thing there, but Mark chapter 9, verse 28 through 29, it says, And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Again, you see two things there, prayer and fasting, in having to do with casting out devils. Now I'm going to show you what the NIV does. First we'll go to Matthew chapter 17. Here you have Matthew 17. Go to the next page. We're going down through here. Now we'll go to verse 21. Oh, wait. Oh, 20, 22. Oh, well, look at that. They took verse 21 completely out. Verse 21 is not in the NIV. Okay, well, well, then we'll go over here. Well, they, they certainly wouldn't do anything to the one in uh, Mark chapter 9, would they? Well, let's jump down here to verse 28. It says, After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, This, con this kind can come out only by prayer. What happened to fasting? Hmm, isn't that interesting? Okay, here again we have the NIV, the making of a contemporary translation. I'll show you what these people have to say about this. These two passages. It says here, in the NIV, Matthew 17, 21, KJV, is entirely missing. It's interesting there, it's, they picked the KJV. Why? To answer that question, we should first turn to Mark 9.29. There Jesus is reported as saying to his disciples, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. I once heard a godly missionary say, If you don't get the answer to your prayer, then fast, and God will have to answer your petition. Look at this. But that is magic, manipulating God, not true religion. Fasting, prayer and fasting is magic. It's manipulating God, not true religion. The fact is that end fasting is not found in our two fourth century manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Okay? That's what they're talking about. Two manuscripts to overthrow prayer and fa fasting. It apparently was added in the fifth century. What's their proof? They have none. None at all when much emphasis was being given to Gnostic asceticism and to monasticism. Yeah, whatever. Then the whole of Mark 9.29 was inserted in Matthew. What a bunch of liars. They have no proof for this. 
Okay, Westcott and Hort's theory of conflation or the Lucian recension, it's also called. It's a total lie, totally made up. But Matthew 17, 21 is not found in our two earliest manuscripts as well as in the best 9th century codex. As at best, it is doubtful whether these words are genuine and so they should not be emphasized. You know, a lot of times these people to talk about the NIV translation. They want you to believe that it was all scholarly and well, we just you know went from what the text said to right into the English and stuff. No, they inserted their own beliefs. This guy had a problem with the word fasting. He didn't like it and so he said it's magic, it's manipulating God, you know. So he took it out of the NIV. See, their own personal beliefs went into the NIV translation. The Holy Spirit didn't guide them. It was flesh. And it was also, I mean, think about something. If you have, if you are possessed with devils, what would be the thing that you'd want to get rid of more than anything? You'd want to get rid of how people cast those devils out. See, if you're tied into the satanic world, then you want to remove that powerful formula there of prayer and fasting to cast out devils, okay? And there are many times when you will need answers to prayer, by the way, that prayer and fasting will get you answers to prayer. Because you see, you're showing God that you're serious, that you are neglecting the flesh. You are willing to say, I will neglect the flesh because I need an answer to prayer here, okay? And just Let me just show you a little analogy here, uh, just something to think about, okay? Let's say... You're going to go out into the woods and there's a wild animal out there, maybe a bear, whatever, and that animal is very dangerous, very bad thing. And so you're going out there and somebody comes along and they say, well, you're going out into the woods, you probably ought to have some protection. This is my great grandfather's old 12 gauge shotgun, this very old gun. But they take this thing and they say, you got to have this with you. You know, I've gone into different parts of the world where, you know, Alaska and Montana is where I've been, and you're not on top of the food chain out there, so you carry a gun with you, okay? And so they hand you this gun, and they say, okay, now here is a very high-powered 12-gauge shotgun rifled slug, okay? This will stop. It. So they hand it to you, and they load it, and they say, there you go. This is your protection. So you go out, you, you're going to go out into the woods, and you oh, I forgot to get uh, my binoculars or whatever. So you set your gun down and you walk back into the house and while you're back in the house, somebody comes along and they take out that high-powered 12-gauge shotgun shell and they put in a spent 12-gauge shell that's empty. And they stick that into the shotgun and they close it up and then they take this high-powered round and they go off. And so you come out, not knowing any better, and you pick up the shotgun and you walk out into the woods. And sure enough, here comes the bad animal, the bear or whatever, and you point it at him. I'm not going to do it for safety's sake. Cock the hammer and click. And now that animal comes and kills you. Why? Because somebody took away your ammunition and they gave you a dud. Now, who's responsible for your death? You aren't. It's the person that took away your ammunition. But perhaps you think, well, that was just two places in the Gospels. You know, you're making a big deal out of this. Well, I'm going to show you that the perverts that made the NIV, they didn't just mess around with the uh, passages there in Matthew and in Mark. I'm going to show you this. So check this out. Okay, we're here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5. It says here, In stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. Okay, Paul's talking about the things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God. And then he's going down through here. And one of the things that you can do, that you should do as a minister, is fasting. Right there. Fasting. But let's look at the old NIV and see how they mess it up. Here you have chapter 6, verse 5. In beatings, 
imprisonments and riots in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger. Well, who hasn't been hungry? I'm kind of hungry right now, as a matter of fact. I'm not fasting. See? Why would they take it out? Isn't that strange? But that's not where it ends. We're going to jump over here to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Here you have chapter 11. And we're going to go over to verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often. So you see, hunger and thirst is not the same as fasting. In hunger and thirst, yeah, you'll have that. But it's not the same thing as fastings. In fastings, and by the way, it says often. Often. In cold and nakedness. You want to have spiritual power you need to learn how to fast. Okay, what about the NIV? 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 27. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. <laughs> uh, hunger and thirst and gone without food. See? No, it's fasting. Why are they removing the word fastings? Isn't that peculiar? That they would take away a very powerful form of spiritual warfare in the NIV. You can't learn about it. You can't learn about this kind cometh not forth but by prayer and fasting. It's taken out. You're disarmed. Okay? They took away the powerful and they gave you the dud. Okay? This book is living. It's powerful, spiritually the most powerful book on the planet. This book is dead. There's no power in this book. Okay? Let me just tell you a little story real quick here in closing. A uh, pastor of our house church, uh, he was working somewhere, and he actually was able to meet a young lady, and they got to talking and everything, and she was very, very uncomfortable around him. Very uncomfortable. And through conversation, it came out that she was a generational witch. She was not a wannabe. Okay, she was the real thing. And my pastor said, I want to pray and fast for you. And she lost it. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't, no, 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 don't do that. And he said, what's the problem? And you know what she said? She said, I will lose my power. Mm-hmm. See, they don't want that. People that are possessed with devils... They don't want Christians praying and fasting for them, okay? Because you're neglecting the flesh when you fast. And therefore, the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary to one to the other. So you put down the flesh through fasting, and then you pray. There's a lot more power there. And the lost world, the world of the devils, does not want praying and fasting Christians. And Paul said in fastings often... If you're a minister of Jesus Christ, you need to do some fasting every once in a while. And this wicked perversion over here, the NIV, doesn't want you to know about it. You better think about that out there, those of you who defend this. Okay? That's it for now.